if the another person follows his duty my right is being enforced so this is the beautiful blend of beautiful relation between fundamental rights and fundamental duties <music>
signifies the safeguarding of basic rights of others so what it means it means if i am performing a duty uh, my duty other another people's right is enforced i mean a, an, another person is uh, realizing his right for example if i am pro following proper traffic rules another person's right to i mean uh, move properly or move freely uh, move without hurdles that is being enforced so this is the way if i am performing my duty another person's right is being enforced right if the another person follows his duty my right is being enforced so this is the beautiful blend of beautiful relation between fundamental rights and fundamental duties right next con concept is enforcement through faithful discharge so basically in our constitution fundamental uh, duties are being uh, provided but there is no legal backing for this fundamental duties means which means there is no law if uh, i am not following a fundamental duty there is no law that punishes me so it uh, basically the duties have to be performed uh, by my conscience only i should be willing to perform this uh, the fundamental duties so in this way only the fundamental duties are being uh, implemented or followed or acted upon right next we will see the global incorporation of fundamental duties so soviet union earlier ussr this was the first country to incorporate fundamental duties the concept of fundamental duties uh, in in the constitution so this is notably it is the first country in the world uh, to adopt fundamental duties in the constitution in fact this is the uh, this is one of the countries which made uh, the fundamental duties legally backing mean if a person or a citizen is refusing to perform his fundamental duty he can be punished under the law so this is one of the uh, this is soviet union is one of the country including former yugoslavia and albania right several other countries also incorporated uh, the fundamental duties in their constitution some examples are like people uh, republic people's republic of china in india we have our countries also there poland albania czechoslovakia netherlands so there are many countries as the time passed by they have incorporated a list of fundamental duties in their constitutions so basically this is the concept behind the fundamental duties please try to remember and follow the point because there may be a question in the prelims examination uh, about the concept of fundamental duties right 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 we will see how the uh, how and where the fundamental duty are incorporated in our constitution right first of all uh, in the uh, original constitution that was the adopted in 1949 the fundamental new, uh, duties were not there i mean they are, they, they are not there in the original constitution uh, in fact but indirectly there were some some fund fundamental duties under article 33 so basically the people i mean the persons the uh, who are there in the armed forces and the persons who are there in the police forces they are expected to perform certain duties so these duties have been uh, provided to maintain discipline in the armed forces and security forces so indirectly there was a concept of fundamental duties but this is confined to only armed forces and police forces so the reason behind this is to enforce discipline among these forces right so the fundamental duties have been incorporated into the constitution through the 42nd amendment act of 1976 so we will call this amendment as mini constitution because a lot of amendments have been made to this uh, constitutional amendment act so basically because of this reason we will call, call it a mini constitution so the fundamental duties are also incorporated 
to this uh, amendment act so <coughs> so this uh, these duties were incorporated uh, during the emergency period uh, internal emergency period between 1975 and 1977 right similarly uh, one fundamental duty has been added in 2002 uh, uh, by 86th constitutional amendment act that is related to uh, right to education for the children below the age of 6 to 14 years so what uh, this fundamental duty is it encompasses the parents or guardians of the children between 6 and 14 years to uh, provide elementary education education as a right so it is the duty of the parents or the guardians of the children to ensure that the child is provided elementary education so this has been made as a duty upon the parents or the guardians of the children right so presently uh, they are provided in article 51a in part 4a of the constitution of india so here the fundamental duties are placed so one reason uh, they are not placed in part 3 of the constitution is part 3 basically comp comprises fundamental rights they are justiciable so fundamental rights are not placed here fundamental rights are placed along with the dpsp so dpsp these are non justiciable so the fundamental duties also non not justiciable means there is no particular law to enforce if one person is not following fundamental duty or acting according to the fundamental duties uh, there is no i mean there is no particular law, law to punish that person so basically because of this reason they are placed along with the direct to principles of state policy right one more important aspect is they are in alignment with the universal declaration of human rights so they resonance the article 29 one of the universal declaration of human rights act of human rights uh, 1948 we have seen one mcq also based on uh, uh, about regarding this topic so the fundamental rights are in consonance with the article 29 one of the universal declaration of human rights right so we will see the list of uh, fundamental duties and uh, then we will get uh, an idea that uh, what uh, holistically what the fundamental duties are about and what they contain so when 42nd amendment was uh, made and fundamental duties are incorporated basically earlier there were 10 fundamental duties but with the 86th amendment constitutional act one more fundamental duty has been added that is educating the children between 6 and 14 years so overall now 11 fundamental duties are there in the constitution right the first duty is article 51 a sub clause a abide by the constitution and respect the ideals and institutions the national flag and national anthem so basically this duty is about respecting the symbols of uh, nation right the second one is 51a subclass b cherish and follow the noble ideals that inspired our national struggle for freedom so this is about uh, respecting the ideals and the goals of the um, founding fathers of india so this is to respect and idealize the vision of founding fathers of the nation founding fathers right third duty is uphold and protect sovereignty unity and integrity of india so this is about upholding the sovereignty unity and integrity of india so basically we can see these particular words in the preamble also right and the fourth duty is defend the country and render national service whenever called upon to do so so every citizen should be ready to 
ready to serve the nation whenever it is demanded so every should, uh, citizen shall be ready, ready to serve the nation so the actually the implementation of this can be seen in uh, ncc national cadet corps so the students are trained uh, on the lines of armed forces so a kind of discipline will be taught to them and also similar to national service scheme nss so this is also basically emanates from this particular duty so try to remember these two items these have basically emanated from this particular duty the next duty is uh, next particular duty is article 51 ae promote harmony and a spirit of com spirit of common brotherhood so basically we also call this as uh, fraternity we have seen the word in preamble so this duty here is saying uh, to protect the fraternity so fraternity protect common brotherhood among all people of india uh, transcending religion uh, religious linguistic and uh, regional or sectarian diversities and to renounce practices that are derogatory derogatory to the dignity of women so basically this first part is uh, with respect to uh, ensure uh, i mean bringing in a harmonious society harmonious society and the second part is about ensuring the ensuring and protecting the dignity of women right next right is uh, sorry next duty is value and preserve rich heritage of our composite culture right we have uh, we have a particular dpsp regarding this one the state should ensure that uh, our uh, uh, rich cultural and uh, um, natural heritage uh, should be protected we have a particular act to ensure that also and the uh, same thing is mentioned in the uh, fundamental duties also here the citizen should ensure that our rich uh, heritage and culture is protected heritage and culture is protected right it has been uh, it has be uh, made as a duty of every citizen to protect the rich, uh, rich heritage and culture of india the next one is eighth uh, duty is protect and improve the natural environment including forests lakes rivers wildlife etc and have compassion towards uh, compassion for other living beings other living creatures so basically this is talking about respecting the rights of the rights of the animals or wildlife so the animals have a also have certain rights they have the right to live and uh, uh, so uh, the, this particular fundamental duty is asking citizens to respect the fundamental i mean the rights of the animals and have compassion towards them next the next fundamental duty is develop scientific temper humanism and spirit of inquiry and reform so as we all know india has over the centuries suffered uh, many kinds of uh, disabilities for example one 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 particular disability is uh, superstitions so to overcome this uh, disability superstition and to have a scientific temper scientific temper and a modern ideology this uh, particular duty has been incorporated so basically people should develop inquiry the spirit of reason i mean the art of questioning instead of blindly believing anything that has been said so the uh, person should develop a rationality and question everything before uh, believing a particular and the next duty ninth duty is safeguard public property and abjure violence so this is also very very important duty uh, we can see uh, this particular thing has been 
uh, violated many uh, many a times they uh, during the protests rallies so lot of public uh, property has been uh, is being damaged and uh, there are lots of i mean uh, there is lot of loss to the state and also uh, to the people of india so this particular duty says that asking people to safeguard the public property and abdu violence right the tenth duty is strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of india board and achievement so it is basically asking uh, citizens citizens to look for excellence achieve excellence so the people or citizens should strive for achieving the highest goals to reach the pinnacle of whatever they are doing the next duty is last duty is uh, 51a k that is uh, it is added through 86th amendment act of 2022 uh, so basically the parents and the guardians of the children they should provide opportunities for education to their children uh, or wards between the ages of 6 and 14 years so basically this is about right to education for children so this is the brief explanation of the all the 11 fundamental duties that are incorporated in the constitution of india right so as we have earlier discussed the fundamental duties they are not in the they were not there in the original constitution that was adopted in 1949 they were added to the 42nd constitutional amendment act so there was a committee formed uh, that was saran singh committee <coughs> so the, this particular committee saran singh committee recommended this committee recommended that there should be a list of fundamental duties so uh, and uh, that citizens of india are expected to uh, perform or act upon these fundamental duties so the committee submitted a report and in the in the particular report it said that there should be a list of fundamental duties and citizens are expected to follow those fundamental duties so in the report of the committee the committee suggested eight fundamental duties eight fundamental duties so however some duties were dropped from the list i mean some some duties have been omitted which were suggested by the committee and some other duties were added so overall 10 duties were taken i mean added to the constitution through the 42nd constitution amendment later as we all know 2002 uh, one more duty uh, has been added so at present we have 11 duties so swaran singh swaran singh committee recommended eight fundamental duties right now we will see the some salient features about the fundamental duties so they are dual nature they are civic and moral civic means they are useful in day to day life and also they act as moral obligation i mean they come out of the moral obligation of the citizens so the duties possess a dual nature encompassing both civic and moral dimensions civic means towards the society towards other people moral dimensions means uh, the duty comes from within the person feels that it is my moral obligation it is my duty to perform this duty so basically the duty come from conscience of the person next one is emphasizes the indian way of life so many fundamental duties that are mentioned so basically they show the indian way indian way of life for example respecting women right another one, another one is <coughs> compassion towards animals right so basically many uh, duties that are mentioned reflect the indian way of life right <coughs> next one is application to citizens only so the fundamental duties are applicable to citizens only citizen only so they are not applicable to non citizens 
Similarly, when we were discussing the fundamental rights, uh, we discussed that only some fundamental uh, fundamental rights are applicable to citizens, and uh, some fundamental duties are uh, applicable to both citizens and non-citizens. I mean, they are available to foreigners also, excluding the uh, uh, I mean uh, citizens of the enemy nations. Right. Another feature is clear distinction from fundamental rights. So they are clearly separated from fundamental rights. They are, I mean, the fundamental duties are fundamental duties are not placed in the part three of the constitution. They are placed in the part four of the, uh, I mean, they are placed along with the direct two principles of state policy. So in this way, there is a clear distinction between fundamental rights and fundamental duties. Right. Non-justiciable non-enforceables so this point we have already discussed so if a person is not performing a fundamental duty there is no particular law to uh, punish that person All right now we will see the significance significance means importance of fundamental duties All right so basically the fundamental uh, duties have ethical, social and economic implications. So uh, ethical implications, social implications and economic implications. Next thing is con <coughs> contributions to environment and economic development. So we have seen uh, the fundamental duty, one particular fundamental duty is there that is asking people to protect environment and the wildlife. So in this way, uh, they promote environmental and economic development. Right. <coughs> this, uh, I mean, protecting protecting environment also, uh, I mean, come, I mean, also leads to uh, promoting overall human development within the society. Next uh, uh, important thing about fundamental duties is increasing awareness and realization so over the years the awareness and uh, consciousness about the fundamental duties is increasing and people are more and more uh, over coming and forming into voluntary organizations voluntary organizations or civil society organizations and they are do doing their duties towards the society by helping uh, those who are in need of the help of the other people. So basically the concept and the consciousness about the fundamental duties is uh, day by day increase, increasing in the society that we can see through the voluntary organization, vo voluntary organizations and uh, civil society organizations. Next one is consensus across the political spectrum means there is agreement between all the parties agreement between all the parties about the fundamental duties uh, if we see the example these were added through the 42nd amendment uh, act that was made in 1976 uh, later after two years janta government came into power so uh, most of the changes that were uh, brought through the 42nd constitutional amendment have been repaired or modified by the 44th constitutional amendment uh, amendment so, but this particular section this uh, the part about the fundamental duties has not been removed or modified so this shows the consensus uh, reached upon the uh, placement of fundamental duties in the constitution of india right Next is endorsement by courts and civil society. So basically the judiciary and the civil society also accepted the placement of fundamental duties uh, in the constitution of India. So this shows the pivotal role of fundamental duties in the overall development of the society. Right. So fundamental duties acts, act as the inspiration for excellence. So we have one particular duty which ask the uh, citizens to strive to strive to strive for excellence so basically the fundamental duties act as an act as an inspiration for excellence right now the next one is 
legal actions legal actions reflecting the importance of fundamental duties so they, uh, there is a court case uh, that is rural litigation entitlement kendra versus uh, state of uttar pradesh earlier uttarakhand was part of uttar pradesh so this particular case happened at that time so this shows the uh, duty <coughs> fundamental duty related to environmental protection in the region of mussoorie dehradun belt so the tourism has been increased in the uh, hilly regions or mountain regions and the environment is being disrupted there are lot of infrastructure development activities so in this way the people residing in that area are facing the problem of i mean uh, destruction of environment so the honorable supreme court invoked the fundamental duty of protecting the environment so in this way the importance of uh, fundamental duties has been reiterated once again right now we will see another important aspect about the fundamental duties that is uh, verma committee report on fundamental duties a committee uh, under the chairmanship of verma js verma has been constituted in 1919 to examine and recommend uh, for effective implementation of fundamental duties so the committee has been appointed in 1999 so the uh, mandate of the committee was to look into the operational aspects of fundamental duties and the recommend steps which can teach and education educate people about the need to obey fundamental duties so the committee has examined and it uh, given some recommendations so the committee has suggested some recommendations the recommendations are mainly pointed towards the a uh, persons who, who are holding uh, are who are holding public places public office i mean people who are part of the government so right we will see what are the recommendations that are given by the verma committee it said fundamental duties uh, raise the standard of citizen in public uh, public life so the committee opened that the fundamental duties raise the standard of uh, citizens or people in the public life therefore therefore every individual should obey and promote fundamental duty so this is the first and foremost important recommendation of the committee next other recommendation all other recommendations are pertaining to the persons who are holding public offices so the committee suggested that public office holders should avoid avoid self selfishness and nepotism nepotism is favoring people who are close to them or related to them so so basically the committee is asking that people who are holding public offices they should uh, avoid selfishness and nepotism their foremost foremost priority must be serve the people's interest rather than individual interest so they should ensure that they are serving the public interest not their own interest personal interest right <clears throat> next point is integrity should be the main principle in the functioning of the public office so the first and foremost guideline that should drive the public servant is integrity right integrity should be the first and foremost principle that should guide, that should be guiding the uh, action or behavior of the public servant ne next one is they should uh, they should be as open as possible about all decisions and action which were taken by them so openness is basically transparency so they should ensure transparency in the actions or <coughs> actions or decisions made by them right public officials should maintain honesty while in office so honesty we also have the uh, quotation of honesty is the best policy so this is very 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 important for public people who are in public life so basically they should also maintain honesty in their public life right 
another important uh, recommendation given by the committee is leadership is very important in the sense that holders of public op- office should promote these principles by leadership a skill and a set an example so first the people who are holding public uh, public offices if they follow fundamental duties so if they follow and implement the fundamental duties the other people will take it as an example and the common people will come out and they also start following the fundamental duties so first the committee asked the public servants and the people who are holding the public offices they asking them to follow the fundamental duties first and set an example and become leaders so uh, if this is done automatically the other people will be inspired and they will also start following the fundamental duties so in this way these are very beautiful and important recommendations given by the verma committee right right next question uh, next came the question that whether there should be a law to implement the to ensure that fundamental people are following fundamental duties so the committee also examined this thing and it said that there is no need for a separate law so there is no need for a separate law so if a separate law is made it will look like a uh, tyranny i mean uh, i mean people are uh, being made as slaves and uh, it will a kind of tyrannical uh, tyrannical action so there should be uh, they, there is no need for a separate law uh, and moreover the committee identified that already there are some laws there are laws through which we can enforce the fundamental rights we can realize the fund- sorry fundamental duties through those laws we can realize the fundamental duties and uh, the committee also given uh, listed the particular acts through which the fundamental duties can be realized so we will see the what are the laws recognized by the laws or acts recognized by the uh, verma committee the first one is representation of people act of 1951 so through this act uh, the representative people's repre- representatives uh, mps mps and mlas so these people can be punished and uh, can be seen that they will be no longer representing the people of um, representing the people so they can be dismissed from their office if they are uh, indulging or involving in corrupt practices so this particular act rp act 1951 ensures this and the second one is <coughs> protection of civil rights act of 1955 55 so under this act people who are preaching and practicing untouchability and causing disharmony in the society they can be punished under this particular act so in this way fraternity and brotherhood so in this way this particular duty can be realized next one is the wildlife protection act of 17 uh, sorry 1972 so this is actually for protecting and preserving rare and perishing animals birds and um, plants so <coughs> it prohibits the particular act prohibits the illegal trading of animals so in this way through this act the duty pertaining to protection of environment protection of environment and having compassion compassion towards the other wildlife and animals this can be realized so the next act is prevention of insults to national honor act of 1970 by 1971 this act <coughs> through this act if any person insults or dispre- disrespects the national anthem flag and the constitution these are symbols of nation symbols of nation if they are disrespected disrespected uh, that particular person can be punished so this is uh, it, uh, it uh, ensures that uh, fundamental duty 1 and 2 are protected and enforced the other act is forest conservation act of 1980 so this also uh, helps in ensuring the fundamental duty of protecting environment protecting and preserving environment and having compassion towards the animals 
so it prohibits the usage of forest for other human activities which leads to destruction of environment destruction of environment right so these are uh, these are some of the important acts that have been identified the identified by the verma committee uh, try to remember this uh, these acts uh, in prelims there might be a, uh, there may be a question about that uh, this particular acts may be given and uh, the question can be like which of the following acts are related or associated with the fundamental duties so along with these acts some other acts may be given and you have to choose the correct acts from the list given so there may be a, a question from this part this uh, acts part of the fundamental duties also so please try to remember now to <coughs> uh, check our understanding we will uh, practice some questions that are asked in the previous exams so first question it has been it is being repeated because it is coming in each part fundamental rights the psp and fundamental duties the question is about <coughs> the question is about the uh, universal declaration of human human rights passed in 2020 2020 uh, other than the fundamental rights which of the following parts of the constitution of india reflect the principles and the provisions of the universal declaration of human rights so we have seen preamble directive principles of state policy and the fundamental duties so all of all of these aspects reflect the <coughs> declaration of human rights so we have seen the fundamental duties also reflect the uh, the spirit of declaration of human rights we have seen particular article uh, in the declaration article 29 so this particular provision also uh, fundamental duties specifically reflect the provisions mentioned in the article 29 of the fundamental uh, declaration of human rights of 1948 so the correct answer is answer d 1 2 and 3 the next one is which of the following statements is are true about the fundamental duties of an indian citizen so asked in the 2017 first option is a legislative process has been provided to enforce fund these fundamental duties uh, they are correlative to legal duties so first option is incorrect because <coughs> no legislative backing is there for fundamental duties i mean there is no particular law to enforce the fundamental duties so this statement becomes incorrect next one is they are correlative to legal duties legal duties are there i mean the duties which are <coughs> provided i mean made as a legal duty i mean we have to compulsorily do that aspect so <coughs> however this state, uh, statement also becomes uh, incorrect because there is no particular law which is uh asking people to i mean which in, which is punishing people if particular if a particular fundamental duty is not being performed so basically these both these statements are correct so the correct answer is <coughs> answer d neither one nor two right the answer is neither one nor two all right the next question is <coughs> uh to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity of india so is a provision mentioned in dash part of the constitution so this question is asked in 2015 so the options are preamble of the constitution directive principles of state policy fundamental rights fundamental duties so this particular phrase to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity of, uh, of india is mentioned in the fundamental duties <coughs> so the right answer is answer the fundamental duties so <coughs> this is some brief information about the fundamental duties i hope you have gain, gained some <coughs> important important information through this lecture so this is all for today see you next time bye